Alrighty, all welcome back to the channel. Of course, my name is Tommy, and this here is that gallery backyard barbecue. And today's show is definitely going to be a good one as we are going to fire up the SNS kettle and throw on a nice rack of venison. Now, look, I've never done venison before on, in the uh, in the rack form, but I have done New Zealand lamb probably a hundred times as I worked in the uh, in the restaurant business. We used to serve lamb chops all the time, so I definitely have. Have a little bit of skill set involved in this although I am going to switch it up from a uh, from more of a sweet sauce on the lamb and we are going to go with like a garlic herb butter on this uh, on this venison chop so I am telling you right now this one is going to be good and I will make it as quick as possible so what I want to do here is let's turn our attention down to the board let me show you what we're working with and let's start the show so anytime you are doing a game like this, there are really only two schools of thought, and that is going to be a sweet sauce or a garlic herb. The channel is definitely going to go with the garlic herb, and you can see what is on the board, and there is not much to it. That said, the most important aspect of this cook is going to be in the doneness of the uh, of the venison. you got to be a rare or a low, uh, and, and that is a very low, medium rare. You cannot be over that. So basically, we will keep this one simple. We will get the venison out of the package. We will get it all dried off. I've got some kosher salt. We will hit it with that. And I've also got some fresh cracked black pepper. We will hit it with that. We will just leave this on the board to do its thing. Let's turn our attention to that butter garlic herb and let's get that mixed up. So this one's gonna get started with some garlic. You are gonna wanna do a chop on that. I am looking at about two to three tablespoons. I am definitely garlic on the heavy. You are gonna get that in a uh, get that in a little bit of bowl. Hit it with some olive oil, about three tablespoons or so. From there, you are gonna wanna grab the lemon. We are looking at about a quarter zest of lemon. Add that to the bowl with the garlic. Grab yourself some parsley. Remember, freshness is the name of the game. You are gonna go about a quarter cup of nicely chopped parsley from there it is going to be some fresh rosemary you are going to do about a tablespoon or two add all that together now you can adjust it with more oil maybe a tablespoon or two and that is it what we are going to do here is let's get that on the side now let's get on over to my sns kettle and get that fired up So these chops are going to receive the double sear treatment. I got a cast iron skillet in the house at 450. That is going to give me that initial heat. We will bring that down. We will get that in the uh, in the SNS right over the hot coals. That is going to take it up and over 600. I can promise you that. And as you can see, we are certainly piping hot. It is time to get sear number one on. We will get that venison chop. We will carefully lay it in. Now look, this is only going to take about two minutes on the first side. After that, we will move the venison to the other side. This is only a two-sided sear. And again, another minute should do it. And I got to tell you, man, look at the color on that first round of sear. That is absolutely perfection. So basically what we will do here, we will move that out of the cast iron skillet, but we ain't done with that cast iron skillet yet. I am going to move it off the flame because I got to bring that down to about 400 or so. In the meantime, my chef's temp wireless is going to get the call. I mean, when you are doing a little piece of meat like this, a little, uh, little rack of roast like this, the wireless uh, temp gauge is definitely needed and I do have 25% off so if you want to try them out I've got a link down in the description right to chef's temp give them a try I am telling you it is all I use on the channel from the wireless to the wire to the handheld so basically what we are going to do here we are all set up to go once that cast iron skillet reaches a lower temp I will bring you guys back. We're going to take this to the next step that is going to involve some live fire. 
So once your temperature on that cast iron skillet has come down to about 400 or so, you wanna get that mixture we made up before. You wanna add about a half a stick of butter to that and get all that in the cast iron skillet because we are about to have some fun. And unfortunately with three cameras, I forgot to turn every single one of them on, go figure. That said is all you missed here as I grabbed that rack and put it directly in the flame. We are picking it up from there. Now look, anytime you are working with, uh, well, anytime you are working with meat, live fire and butter, you are gonna get some heavy flare ups. That's what the channel wants. That's what the channel likes. We are gonna build some flavor. We are definitely gonna build some char. That said, you're gonna wanna be careful here because you don't wanna burn the meat for say. And this is all about that second sear and basically how we are gonna work this. We are gonna get the meat in the flame. Let it sit for about maybe 30 seconds to a minute. From there, we are gonna take it over to our skillet. That butter should be nice and melted now because we are gonna baste out these chops. And you are gonna wanna get a good bit of butter sauce on it. Just kind of roll it around it if you need to. And now it is gonna be back to the flame. So basically we are gonna go from flame to butter sauce, back to the flame to butter sauce, back to the flame, you know the deal. But look, at this point, you are really gonna get some flare up. You are really gonna get some flame kissed meat. So you definitely have to be careful here. But I gotta say, man, is there anything better than cooking like this in the backyard? I mean, this is just what the, uh, what no pellet grill, no master bill, you know, really nothing else could do except the kettle. And I am definitely digging it, I gotta tell you. And also remember that we are shooting for that rare to low, medium rare. You cannot be over that, otherwise the meat really will be no good. So it has to be that rare, so you're gonna wanna be careful. Have a hand held handy if you need it. That said, flame is definitely going to equal some char, and for me, char is flavor. Oh man, look at the color on that. That looks absolutely incredible, man. That looks absolutely perfect. So let's get this basted off one more time. Let's get it on the flame one more time, and let's just, uh, let's just pause and take a look at that beauty right there. Oh man, that looks good. So look, what I wanna do here is let's get it off the, uh, off the cooker. I'm pretty sure we are good on temp. We are gonna get it to the board. We are gonna get the rest of that marinade and put it over the chops. Let it sit for about five, 10 minutes. After that, I'll bring you back and I will cross my fingers and hope I nailed it. Alrighty guys, and that is that. I am just gonna go right down the middle. We are gonna slice this open and cross our fingers. Oh yeah, I nailed it. <laughs> guys, I am hoping the cameras are picking this up. We absolutely nailed it. I mean, you gotta get these things on that, uh, on that rare to medium rare, otherwise uh, they're just gonna be too tough. You gotta get there. Let's go ahead and let's cut this down. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna finish cutting this up. I gotta take a snap or two. After that, I'll bring you guys back. We will do that taste test, talk about it, and close out the show. Alrighty, and here we go. Snapshot taken. And look, right off the bat, I gotta tell you, if you think this is undercooked, think again. I mean, this is the way you gotta have it. I used to eat uh, a little bit different than this, but uh, New Zealand lamb chops, I used to eat them all the time back in the late 70s and early 80s. More of a, uh, more of a sweet sauce than, than an herb sauce like I got on here. This is more of a garlic herb. Um, not, really, uh, not really feeling the sweet sauce on this, so I just went with the uh, garlic herb. We are gonna do that taste test, and, and before I jump in, on this taste test, you know, I've been having loads of fun on that, uh, loads of fun on that s, &S kettle. Um, it is really has taken me aback the last, you know, two, three, four cooks, and I'm definitely gonna have more on that. Um, after a while, uh, years and years and years of the electronics with the, uh, well, with the master bill, with the pellet grills, it is good to just go back to, you know, just charcoal and a friggin' lighter, man. I'm telling you, it is a lot of fun. You can control, you know, you can control a lot more things as far as the flame and, and smoke and, you know, all that jazz there. So it has been great fun to me to go back. 
But now the uh, more important question, I got Molly down there uh, ready to rock and roll. Oh man, <laughs> yeah. All right guys, so look, I have to tell you, um, I love the garlic herb. I love the lemon zest on it. It really, it makes the meat really shine through. Um, you don't get a lot of the butter. You get more of the herb and more of the lemon and the garlic, man. I mean, this is, if you think this is a game, you think again, man, this is top-notch stuff. There's no doubt about it. I mean, if you went to a restaurant, you are going to pay pretty hefty for a meal like this. We are doing it in the backyard, so how could you beat that? So look, what else could I say, man? This is, uh, this is a rack of venison. This is something different. I haven't done this on the, I got to move this back because Molly, uh, Molly is right there. I haven't done something like this on the channel. I am trying to get through some different things other than your, you know, your briskets, your porks, and, and so forth. Although we're going to have some of that stuff coming up on the SNS kettle, there's no doubt about it. So that is going to close out this show. Again, I appreciate all you guys for watching. I've got all the information down on this cook from the uh, 30 or 25% off on that chef's temp. We've got the SNS kettle down there. I mean, you name it, we got it. We've got all the ingredients to make this. And that is going to close out this show, man. I appreciate all you guys for watching. Again, my name is Tommy. And until next time, we will see you soon.